morning. What? Or as we say in Holland, Goedemorgen. We are on our way to uh, New Orleans at the moment. And we just got into Louisiana. And we're uh, taking a picture with the Louisiana sign, which is basically over there. There it is. So we're gonna take a selfie again. You know how much I love my selfies. Oh. We just parked here, and I love this visitor center. It's nice. You're gonna take. They're gonna take a picture of us. Yay! So that was that. <laughs> Bradley's going for for uh, he's going to the toilet. What's he doing? Going to the restaurant. Okay. Yeah, so how much is it for us to drive there still? About thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. So we're we're like thirty maybe minutes. 40. Maybe forty. Depending, depending on traffic. traffic. Exactly. Yeah. So we're, also, we're basically almost there. So just a little rest stop. Take a picture. And we're on our way again. Second or third largest in the country now. Yeah. That we're at, not this one that you're seeing right here, but the other one on the other side of it. It is just massive. It's got like a rest stop. And now you can see it kind of off the horizon. These are a lot like our house. Yeah. But yeah. well, in, in Holland, there are like the, the, the three, two or three story buildings are actually one house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah These are not, though. This is all. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is all our four people. It is? Yeah. Okay. Because these houses look pretty nice. Well, thanks to federal grants of rebuilding them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but. And like you see a lot of solar panels. Yeah. That's actually done by the government in some cases. I think it was New Orleans is what? You pay 10 grand in a loan and we will put enough power panels on your house to supply you energy. Yeah. And they were doing it to get power back up quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. There's uh, probably the ninth. Yeah. That's it. They never reopened. Wow. Cavemen. That's creepy. Well, a lot of them used to sell the sides of them. Hey, mom, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, weird stuff like that. It's like end of the world shit. Yeah, because like zombie apocalypse shit. They were out here for months rioting, yeah. shooting each other, whatever they did. We had, like said, we the had Marty come right party. after the first party. And they're all armed. When we went to Biloxi. <laughs> uh, That's the bridge. Across from the Borobage yeah. was that home. There's a double tree. Yeah. And it used to be apartments and spray painted on the side of it was Bob or OK. And it was just destroyed, but we sure as hell had Marty Moreau. It was a good year, too. Called the bridge, Chris. The twin spans. That's a beautiful bridge right there. Yeah. It looks like it's suspension, but it's really not. It's made for looks. Oh, yeah. And then on the other side of it's a really old bridge, which is a Huey P. Long. They're both beautiful. All right. Think, but... For the United States, there's probably more history, no, even more than Ellis Island. You know, like uh, Ellis Island and all were most immigration. Yeah. Because this was way before uh, America was called it America. Yeah. So, but that's why I want to go to St. Augustine too. Because that's also right way before yeah. America became America. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, like I said, uh, French and Spanish. Yeah. And what was it? It's the World's Fair that was here, right? That's where they kind of got their yeah. transit systems and stuff. Because yeah. the World's Fair was here. I don't remember what year that was either. 
back with Christmas and Charles. Sam Smith. Coming up to Mardi Gras World at the entrance. There you go. So how can I how can I best describe this? Is this a museum? Is this a what is it? Yeah. This is all of the stuff off of the old floats. Okay. So basically a warehouse that you can visit to see the old floats. Past floats. Yeah. And stuff off of them. Different artwork. And, you know, it wasn't a lot. a nice smooth surface so they can apply the paint in step three. Uh, any prop that already has paint on it is one that has been used before and they're either just patching up those damaged areas or they've added a new element that needs to be paper or shade. This particular prop here, this is my prop here, uh, actually a prop sculpted by our robot. We call her Pixie. Uh, Pixie is going to be similar in concept uh, to 3D printing and that we're starting with a, a computer-based model, but a 3D printer is actually an additive process, creating things in layers. We are still sculpting, so it's more like a large-scale CNC router. We'll meet Pixie a little bit later. Um, large female prop over here, definitely a repurposed prop. Looks like she has a little bit of new clothing, any of the brown section. So they created that new clothing and it was like flat material. Uh, that's a very common prop type. Large torso, large head. Um, a lot of times uh, they'll either be painting the uh, head differently or cutting the heads off, finding a uh, different head that could fit in the torso, and then uh, repainting, repropping. Uh, we'll see a couple more versions of that torso. We have it in various shapes and sizes. Um, that torso is fiberglass, though. So. Last time she was here, she was a fairy godmother or a, a princess of some sort, now being turned into a character from an American Horror Story. Uh, that was a TV show that's uh, filmed or taped here in New Orleans or set here in New Orleans. Uh, and that is that parade's theme, movies, TV shows set in New Orleans. At one time, that particular prop was also the actress uh, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, so uh, they do a pretty good job of uh, turning these people into other people. Uh, what the name of it was, it's from a French director. I've also seen a couple of H.G. Wells props, a couple of Jules Verne props. Looks like each one will be a different, uh, different Just so you know. We also do props, we have multiple sketches, on sheets of styrofoam. We all sketch them out, stack them up, uh, cut them out, and then stack them all up. I glue those pieces together using a display insulation type material. As you can see, 
that there. So each of these lines uh, here is one completely paper mache. Uh, but this here, uh, I believe it's a lava lamp, uh, is actually a, an older prop uh, that sat in our warehouse for a number of years. It showed up a couple weeks back, uh, looked pretty bad. Uh, so they completely removed the whole outer shell uh, and then went ahead and repapered mache the whole thing. So all these are waiting to be repainted. Just as a reminder, anywhere where you see the brown paper, uh, areas that have been packed up. The normal paper mache props, not, not a uh, uh, completely waterproof once again. Uh, what I've seen a lot more yeah. of recently is a resin-based hard coat that they're basically spraying on some of these props. Uh, but we're not putting that on all of our props. It does add some additional expense up, up front. Normally props that are unique in nature, or we know we can use them a lot again in the future, it just makes it less uh, paper mache work in, in the future and in, 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 uh, in the years coming up. That's the section. Two more for American Horror Story. You join twins and the New Orleans style cemetery tomb back there. Cemetery tomb, another prop sculpted by Pixie Lowry and a one large uh, one from the outside of uh, Painters normally start this way, run. Finish up using airbrush, traditional brush techniques. Uh, the paint is uh, inexpensive interior house paint. A lot of times they need to uh, water this paint down since they are using airbrush for the Mississippi River. Uh, so it does happen where we actually had a, uh, a we call it the barge incident a couple weeks back where a barge actually ran into our warehouse. So we have this little uh, front house effect happening back here right now. Um, Luckily, no one was in the area at that time, and uh, no one was injured, thankfully. Uh, but we did lose about 7,000 square feet of studio space, uh, so they're currently fixing up that area. But they had to, to move a lot of that stuff or, uh, out into another area. This warehouse is about 250,000 square feet, uh, but the show must go on. Mardi Gras will still happen. Uh, so we'll get those props out. Just a little bit of an inconvenience, I guess. My friends, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, Kiss up there, uh, have a long history with Mardi Gras. Been in the crew of Endymion at least twice uh, that I know of. Uh, once a couple years ago and the first time in the early 1980s. Uh, those do have the clear coat on them. We know we won't be uh, repurposing those. Uh, those are pretty awesome. They actually went on a, a Kiss cruise a uh, couple... Uh, uh, last summer, I believe, so they used them as photo ops and rented them out. Step one of the process, next couple stages. You with Iron Man again? Uh, 
Damn good on Yoda. So we saw Brad. the five glass mold Brad. one second ago. Damn uh, good they did on Yoda. Uh, three Damn good they did on Yoda. I'm doing that video. There's a Wonder Woman head behind a uh, large Oscar prop there. Uh, that comes from the female version. Uh, from the male version, I've seen Darth Maul, Young Elder John. It's basically about uh, anyone. Uh, so all these are going to the same parade for next year. Looks like they're nice, we need them too. Also great for props that uh, we need to uh, mass produce. Uh, generally speaking, if we are uh, creating more than one of a prop, we will uh, um, uh, send it to Pixie. Uh, Pixie the Robot was named after Miss Pixie, uh, who was playing current secretary at one point. She actually worked her way up to vice president of the company, one of the main reasons we are the company we are today. And she is actually the queen uh, in that large mural back there with Blaine Kern being the king. Uh, Blaine Kern is still with us. He is in his early 90s. Um, every once in a while, he'll drop all and drop some knowledge on us. Uh, he uh, actually illustrated a children's book that sold in the gift shop with his uh, wife.